Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, let me simply share my screen. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, hello, everybody, and thanks for invite for the invite today to Beside Singapore. So um, thanks to the team and thanks for organizing this nice event. I'm very honored to be part of that. So um, as the introduction was already saying, today uh, my talk will be how to intercept mobile app network traffic or also AKA the squirrel in the middle. Um, so just again, briefly about myself. So I had a lot of roles in the past already that were tied to IT and also IT security. So I was for a long time a Unix admin, pen tester, and recently also security architect for web and mobile apps to help them um, to build security in during the SDLC. And I'm the technical director at F-Secure here in sunny Singapore. Besides this, as already announced, I'm also one of the project leaders of the OVAS Mobile Security Testing Guide and also the OVAS Mobile AppSec Verification Standard. And as part of this, um, I also have the idea um, for this um, specific talk that I'm presenting you today. I also occasionally occasionally um, blog on this URL that you can see below. So what I will be talking to you um, today is about the ultimate decision tree for mobile app network testing. Maybe a bit of a clunky title, but um, earlier this year, I just wanted to make a brain dump on a lot of things that were happening to me in the past when I was trying to set up um, a mobile app test. And many times during the mobile app pen testing, there were just some edge cases, some tricky things that I would need to solve. And I just wanted to summarize everything and also share with others. And um, this is now specifically about how you can intercept um, the network traffic of a mobile app. So I will not go into much detail of this um, decision tree that you can see here on the right. If you want to go through that and um, have a look at this blog post, there are a bit more details around it, and then you can also get a high resolution um, of, this, um, of this decision tree. Okay, so the examples that I will be showing you today will be mainly about iOS. And the reason for that is simply there's a lot of information out there, usually for Android anyway. So I want to focus today mainly on iOS. So when you're starting a penetration test and you have your IPA, your APK, and um, you are installing your mobile app um, on your device, then in order to configure now everything, in order to get up to speed and execute um, pen test or the security assessment, the flow is um, very similar to a web app. So if we stick with the iOS app example, we need to configure our iOS device, obviously to work with Burp. So our Burp suite, our interception proxy is running. And we need to configure um, the port of Burp in our iOS device, obviously, which is very similar when you're testing a web app, they just need to do it in your browser. Um, then, of course, we have the um, Burp certificate authority. And this CA certificate, we would need to install into the trust store of our mobile device. So again, in a web app test, we would, um, for example, install it into the trust store of Firefox, for example, or whatever browser you're using. In this case, we simply add it then into the iOS device. Nothing too complicated, pretty straightforward. And if this is all done, happy hacking. So unfortunately, this is now not the, um, you, you cannot cover everything with this, otherwise my talk would already be now um, come to an end. So there are quite a bit of edge cases and the edge cases that are not covered in this specific or in this um, basic setup, we will be going through together today. So one quick example that I want to share with you is um, there are many different frameworks. I mean, basically there's a zoo of different kind of mobile app frameworks that allow developers to produce uh, mobile apps. Um, I picked now here three different, uh, three different frameworks. Um, for example, Flutter. Flutter is a framework that um, is developed by Google. And the thing is that for all of these different frameworks, the intention is to have one code base and out of this one code base, the developer is able to um, build and create an iOS and also Android. So there's no need to um, have separate code bases, which is usually the case when you're when a developer is creating native apps because for iOS, you would need to use Swift or Objective-C for Android, Java or Kotlin, which is of course an additional complexity. You have two different source code repos and all of these things. And 
what these frameworks are trying to solve is to have everything um, combined together. You have one programming language and out of this frameworks, you can create your APK, your Android app, and your IPA, your iOS app. So Flutter is definitely um, one that is being used also more often these days. Then there's of course React Native, which was open sourced um, by Facebook um, in 2015. And for React Native, everything is happening in JavaScript. Then we have um, Xamarin. Xamarin was a company that was purchased by Microsoft already a few years back. And the programming language for this is C-sharp. The thing is now, um, if these frameworks are being used, your testing approach might already be a bit different if you want to intercept the network traffic. In order to make my talk a bit more interactive, um, I would like to ask you a question and you can see the, um, the URL here on top. So the URL is polev.com slash Sven S and 131. So you can just open another tab in your browser, on your laptop, on your mobile device, and um, just type in this URL, polev.com slash Sven S 131. So once you have keyed in this URL, a question should be coming up. And the question is, which of the following mobile app frameworks are not using the system proxy of iOS? So if you have no clue, no idea, no worries, just go with your gut feeling. Um, you have three votes. So meaning it could be all of them. Maybe it's just one of them or just two of them. So just if you know it already, just please um, vote for it. And otherwise, um, yeah. Just, just go with your gut feeling. Okay, so we already have um, a few that are that have submitted. So I can see some are thinking that it's Flutter, meaning the framework from Google. Some are thinking it's Xamarin, the framework from Microsoft. And so far we have nobody that is selecting React Native. So let's just wait for a few more seconds. But it seems we are getting a winner here. It's very... Okay, it seems Flutter is winning. Second place is Xamarin. And last is React Native with no vote. Okay, thanks for participating in that. So, and the audience is always right, it seems. So the frameworks that you would need um, a bit of special tricks is Flutter from Google and also Xamarin from Microsoft. The thing is, if you have an app that is in React Native, then the setup that we discussed earlier, where you're simply configuring the proxy, you install the CA, then you will be able to intercept the HTTP traffic from your device, from your browser. Then you will also be able to intercept the React Native app. But this doesn't apply to Flutter and Xamarin. So there we need to do some other tricks. So this is one example um, of where intercepting the network communication can be a bit more tricky. So I would like to share with you um, three different scenarios that I will be going through with, um, with everybody of you today. So the thing is, if the default setup is not working, there might not be several scenarios. And one of them is you might not be able or not allowed to connect your iOS device to the Wi-Fi network. This might be one scenario. Then we have just seen it in the um, questionnaire that we just did the system proxy might be ignored. So Google Flutter and Xamarin, they are not relying on the system proxy that you are setting on the iOS device. And the same applies also to Android. So meaning even though that you set the proxy, the app doesn't care if it's in Flutter or Xamarin, it will simply send out the HTTP request. And last but not least, we have apps or apps are available that are using protocols that are non-HTTP protocols. So there can be protocols that are not HTTP based. And then our usual setup with the tools that we are using for intercepting like Burp Suite or maybe also OWASP set will not be working. So these are the three things that I would like to walk you through one by one. Okay, so the first one is you're not able or not allowed to connect your device to the Wi-Fi network. And you can see this little squill here in the background that is, I guess, very happily nibbling on a phone. So this is the result of a conversation that I had with my um, eight-year-old daughter when I tried to explain to her what a man in the middle attack is. 
So I explained it to her, um, but instead of using man in the middle and to make it gender neutral, and of course also a bit more attractive to my daughter to get her attention, I called it squirrel in the middle. And so therefore for this talk, we will stick to the term squirrel in the middle, and then we will follow the squirrel on its journey on how we can intercept network traffic of mobile apps. So the usual setup for your mobile test um, will be very similar to this. So you will have your iOS device. The iOS device will be um, connected with um, the proxy setting to your BERT instance, which is running on your laptop or your um, machine. And then you will have the squirrel in the middle position and you will be able to intercept and see all the HTTP requests or requests that are happening from the iOS device to the router and vice versa. The thing is I had several occasions in the past um, where this was not working for me. So there might be limiting factors. And the first one is that you might not be allowed to use your jailbroken device in the client's network. You might not be able to use it because you might violate the customer's policy by bringing in a potential vulnerable device that is also routed into the client's network. So this might be one thing. The other thing is um, many times in Wi-Fi, there might be client isolation activated. So this means your laptop and also the iOS device might be jailed. So this means they cannot communicate to each other. So the only way to communicate is from your laptop to your access point and from your iOS device to the access point, but the iOS device cannot um, communicate with the laptop and vice versa. It's also one scenario. And last but not least, and believe it or not, um, the client Wi-Fi might be full. So I had this at least two times with um, uh, quite big companies. And the thing is, it was already full with different staff developers. I could connect my uh, mobile, uh, I could connect my MacBook, but not my iOS device anymore. And yeah, so we need to find a solution for that, right? So what can we do now to intercept this traffic still, even though that we might not be able to communicate directly in the Wi-Fi? What we can do is we can test via a secure shell tunnel. And this is a really cool way um, of intercepting the traffic because what you can do is you connect your iOS device via USB to your laptop, step number one. Once you have done this, um, you can use a tool like iProxy to um, forward now the port of the secure shell daemon of your iPhone. And then you can connect your secure shell to your iOS device. So this is a typical setup to do a secure shell connection to your jailbroken iOS device. What we will be doing additionally now is we're doing remote port forwarding. So what this means is that um, the source port, which is here orange on the iOS device, um, will then be forwarded or will then be used and will be forwarded to the remote port, which is port 8080, which is here in purple on our MacBook. And everything is done via local host, which is marked as green on the MacBook. So with this command that you can see here on the bottom left, it's possible for us to forward the port from 8080 um, from our MacBook to the iOS device so that the iOS device is able to access um, the port, the open port of Burp Suite. So the only thing we need to do is we configure the proxy, but this time to localhost and to port 8080. This we can simply specify then in the settings of the iOS device. And then we open Safari, we browse any page and we are able to intercept. The cool thing is now that the whole communication that we are intercepting is now going through this secure shell tunnel and through the USB connection that we have established or yeah, where the iOS device is connected to your laptop. Also interesting fact is that we can literally connect to any Wi-Fi with the iOS device because we have the proxy setting and all the communication is anyway going now through this um, secure shell um, port forwarding. And if we do this, and you can see here a screenshot um, of a test iPad, um, we can access now the Burp Suite proxy listener on our iPad directly through this um, secure shell tunnel. So I prepared a little demo for this. Um, on the top left, you can see I started iProxy to forward the secure shell port. And we're doing the remote port forwarding now of port 8080 from our MacBook 
to um, the iOS device and we're connecting through the connection of the iProxy that is already being set up. So now you can see I authenticated via Secure Shell. And on the right side, you can see my um, jailbroken iOS device. I go to localhost port 8080 and you can see Burp Suite can be reached. The only thing we need to do now is we need to configure the proxy. We set it to localhost and to port 8080. And once we have done this, we simply go back to our verb suite. We open um, the browser. And if, when, if, uh, when we go now to any page, we can see that the HTTP requests are flying in now. So that's a pretty neat setup. And you can see that it's not really needed to be in the same Wi-Fi network for the iOS device and your uh, MacBook or laptop. So therefore this, as long as your MacBook is in the right, um, in, in the right Wi-Fi where the APIs can be reached, that's already sufficient. Okay, so this um, was use case number one. The second one that, was, that I was already talking about earlier and where you were part of the survey is about um, that the system proxy might be ignored. So if the system proxy is ignored, um, then this usually means we have an app that is built in Google Flutter or in Xamarin. So I have here again um, a little video or a little demo. And here you can see I configured the proxy setting on my iOS device. And I configured everything correctly in Burp Suite. And if I do a refresh here in Safari, in mobile Safari, I can see um, the HTTP request in Burp. I created a test app in Flutter now that is simulating to create HTTP or HTTP, HTTPS requests. And I was clicking already a few times the button here, but no HTTP request is coming. So therefore we have configured a proxy, but obviously somehow Flutter is ignoring it. So the question is now, what can we do? We have said everything, we did everything correct, but somehow it's not working. So again, I would like to ask you a question and just want to understand how would you try to intercept the traffic in the scenario? Um, maybe anyone has some ideas or maybe has done this in the past or maybe can think about anything else um, that can be done here. So I just want to get an understanding from you and if you have any idea what to do here or any tool that you can think about, any specific technique um, that you might have heard of that can be used here, just to get some um, understanding around it. Yes, Wireshark is a very good point. Wireshark we will definitely um, also be using later. So with Wireshark, we would at least be able to monitor the traffic. But um, in case of intercepting, maybe anybody else has some ideas what could be done. Okay, otherwise it's also fine. We will be going through several approaches um, in the next few minutes. Okay, thanks. So um, the system proxy is ignored for Google Flutter. Possible solutions for this would be um, R poisoning. So it's of course pretty old school or you could say the classic, meaning a classic layer two attack where all the traffic is being routed um, through our poisoning to our laptop. And this becomes again the squirrel in the middle then. This is one way. The other way is um, DNS spoofing through a verb extension that is called no proxy. And this is a really powerful verb extension. If you haven't used it before, then I hope you will be very surprised uh, about how this works. The thing is both will also work on non-jailbroken and jailbroken devices. So um, for these kind of interception mechanisms, it's of course uh, not really relevant if you have now a jailbroken or non-jailbroken device, because you would be um, attacking here in, in scenarios where you either directly interfere with the network communication, or you might um, simply need to set the DNS server in, the, um, in your iOS device. So let's talk about the um, no burp plugin. So this is a plugin that is already out there for a few years. And it has two features um, that we can make use of. The first one is a configurable DNS server. So this means our burp suite becomes a DNS server. And a feature that we will be talking about in the next section is 
you will be able to intercept non-HTTP traffic. So how this works is you will be starting the DNS server with this node extension in WorkSuite. We are configuring the DNS server in the mobile device in order to become the squirrel in the middle and intercept then all DNS-based traffic. So let me show you how this works. So in this video, um, on this demo, you can see that we have configured a proxy. Uh, my verb is running here. It's the same port. It's also um, externally available, which is the port that is configured um, on my iOS device. I go back to Safari. And you can see the request to example.com could be captured. The next step is now that I will be opening again the Flutter app, the test Flutter app. So I'm clicking again on HTTP button and the HTTPS button, nothing is happening. Same state as earlier. So what we're doing now is I open this no proxy plugin. I click on this very green button in order to start the DNS server. And Next thing is I will be configuring the DNS server in my iOS device. So first I get rid of the proxy settings because they're not needed anymore. Then I will go to the DNS settings, get rid of everything that is in there. And I will only add the IP address um, of, the, of my laptop where Burp is running. That's it. Um, one more thing I would need to add is two invisible proxy listeners now because we need port 80 and port 443, of course, would need to be running now in invisible mode because all the requests for port 80 and 443 will now be routed directly to our verb suite. So once we have done this, you can see the interception is working. So now I'm trying it again with Flutter and you can see I click on the HTTP request button and the HTTPS request button and it's working. So it's pretty cool because now we are able to intercept uh, all the traffic from the Flutter app, as long as it's DNS based. Of course, if there would be a request to an IP address, we wouldn't be able to capture it like this, but then we could still fall back, for example, to our poisoning and using a tool um, like better. So this is one solution. Um, other solutions might be, and this of course only works on a jailbroken device, is to configure the ETC host. So when you're doing this, um, you can map the IP address of the domain that you identified that the app is talking to and also um, configure it to the IP address of your perp instance. So this would be a very easy way also if you have a jailbroken device. But of course, it's a bit more tedious because you would need to know the domains in advance. And if there's more than one domain, it could become a bit tedious also to configure everything, but still um, one viable option. Another one is to set up an access point in order to route then all the traffic um, also to your verb. So this is a bit more complicated setup because um, uh, because you might need additional hardware, or maybe you at least need to spin up, um, for example, on your on your MacBook or your laptop another um, access point. But definitely also an option, and it's explained in great detail also um, in the mobile security testing guide where you can find the link here. In summary, so we've touched now four different techniques where um, only the ETC host, if we configure this, we need a jailbroken device. For the rest, it's working for non-jailbroken. If you need all traffic from an iOS device, R poisoning or maybe even an access point might be a good option. Otherwise, DNS spoofing is definitely something that can be set up pretty easily with this um, no proxy burp plugin. There are, of course, still other ways how you can intercept network traffic. This is um, not a complete list. You could still set up your own VPN server and also other things could be done in order to intercept traffic. Okay, I would say let's go on with the next section, which is about um, intercepting the non-HTTP traffic. So if everything is set up correctly, you will be able to intercept HTTP and also HTTPS requests in Safari, but you might still not see all the traffic in WebSuite from your mobile app. This might simply be the case because there might be protocols used that are not HTTP. There might be XMPP or maybe other protocols that are being used, maybe even different ports are being used, 
And the problem is that interception proxies, um, such as BERB and also OWASP Z, won't show you this known HTTP traffic because they are not capable of decoding non HTTP protocols by default. So the only thing that OWASP Z and um, BERB Suite can do is they can show you HTTP, HTTPS, obviously, and also web sockets, for example. But if it's anything else, then you will definitely run into a problem. Um, other examples might be apps that have um, built-in chat functions. So this might be where XMPP comes into the picture. And some apps are also relying on pure TCP or raw TCP, um, simply to reduce the overhead of HTTP headers also. So there might be um, several scenarios where you will not be able to handle HTTP. If that's the case, the first thing you need to do, and this is where we come back to the answer from earlier, um, is to use Wireshark because you would need to monitor what is ongoing on the device and the app, what kind of um, protocols are being spoken and um, need this information in order to decide what to do next. So let me show you how you can monitor all the network traffic of an iOS device. So on iOS directly, you cannot um, record a packet trace, but you can do that when you have a MacBook available. So if you connect your iOS device via USB um, to your MacBook, then you will be able um, to create a so-called remote virtual interface or RVI. So when you have connected your iOS device to your MacBook, the only thing you would need to identify is the UDID of your iOS device. And this can be done with this command, xc run, xc trace, list devices. Then you will get all the connected devices, also the simulators and everything else that is available. Once you have the UDID, you can execute the command rvictl. rvictl s, then the UDID, and then a virtual interface is being created on your Mac. Once you have this virtual interface, you can start Wireshark and you just need to select the new virtual interface and then you can um, capture all the packets from this interface. So let me show you this again as a demo. So first I'm executing this command to get the UDID. I have connected uh, my jailbroken iOS device, which you can see here on the right side. And once I have this UDID, I will be using it for RVICTL. So RVICTL is very um, simple. You just have a few three flags and we will be using dash S in order to start a device with the UDID that we just got. So now a virtual interface, which is called RVI0, RVI0 is created and it's available. So now we can execute Wireshark to sniff directly on this interface, RVI0. And once Wireshark opens, um, we can see that the packets are flying in because now we will see all traffic that is being generated on the iOS device. So we have really um, in real time, a, a very good way of seeing what is going on on the iOS device. So you can see here, I'm opening mobile Safari. I'm going to example.com, a lot of, Packets are, of course, flying in because of a lot of things are happening on the iOS device. So, but once we have done this with Wireshark, we have, of course, a very powerful tool to filter everything because with Wireshark, we have the um, display filters available. And with the display filters, we can filter this even further. But you can see that a lot of um, packets are flying in now. So that's a very good way of monitoring now everything. There is... Um, also a really nice way to do this for Android that I also would like to share with you. In order to remotely sniff the traffic now on Android, we can do this also in real time and we can do this with TCP dump, netcat, and of course again Wireshark. What we need to do is we need to log in into our Android phone and um, execute the command TCP dump. We will be capturing everything that is um, ongoing on the WLAN zero interface and are piping then the output of TCP dump to NetCat. So we are opening now a port and in this case it's um, five times one. Next, 
we will be using a tool called ADB, the Android Debug Bridge. That's um, a developer tool that is um, being part of the SDK for Android. And with ADB, we can forward the port. So if our Android device is connected via USB to our MacBook, we simply do now ADB forward. And the port 5 times one is now being also available on our Mac machine. The next thing we need to do is we're connecting now again via NetCut to the port that was just forwarded and are piping then the output to Wireshark. So this is a really um, neat way of how we can intercept, uh, sorry, not intercept, but how we can monitor the traffic of an Android device in real time. So there's no need to make no any PCAT files or anything. Just ever, everything is happening very smoothly then um, during, real, during real time. And we can really see what's happening. So there's also a detailed explanation here on the bottom right in the URL. And this is a link to the uh, mobile security testing guide where we have explained this in great detail. Okay, so monitoring the traffic of an Android device. On the left side, you can see my terminal. On the right side, um, you can see a virtual instance. So this is not any motion, this is not a real device, but the approach is of course the same. On the left side, what I'm doing now is I get a shell on Gini Motion on this Android device. And I'm starting with TCP dump to capture and I'm piping it here to NetCat on port five times one. Now I do this ADB forward. So the port five times one is forwarded. I'm connecting via NetCut now to this port and pipe this to Wireshark. And now I can see all the packets, all the network packets that are being generated on this device. And you can see that a lot of things are flying in. I go again to example.com. I make use of the display filters to so just to look for the HTTP protocol. And you can see that the request that I just made in the browser to example.com, the get request can also be seen here in Wireshark. So again, a really nice way um, of capturing the um, network traffic on a mobile device. When you're using Wireshark, uh, it's of course, the, it's always good to, um, uh, to to have a few tips so that you can also reduce the amount of packets that are flying in, which can become quite messy also. So first of all, really close all apps in the background to reduce the noise as much as possible. And then you should be able to identify the IP addresses of the server the app is communicating with. Once you have this IP address, it's also much more easier for you to filter the traffic by simply using um, the um, rules in Wireshark. So for example, ip.addr equals your IP address, and then you will get all the packets that are part of it. As part of this, definitely one nice feature is follow TCP stream. That's definitely very helpful also. And once you have all of this available, you should be able to identify the protocol and you should ask yourself the question, which protocols are now being used by the app? And also if the traffic is encrypted or not, because then this, of course, also depends on your next steps. So now we have done the groundwork. We know what is happening in the iOS device, on an Android device. And the next step that we are doing is now independent. If it's now Android or iOS, it's um, the same what we will be using now with what we will be doing now with the no uh, proxy plugin. So we will be doing the same as before with the Flutter app. We will be starting the DNS server with no extension. We will be configuring the DNS server in the mobile device. And we will add a listener port now for the port the app is communicating with. Because this will be different than port 80 or 443, or could be different than port 80 or 443. And then we have achieved our goal and we will become the school in the middle and we'll be able to intercept all DNS-based traffic. So let me show you um, again a demo for this. Oops, quickly go to the next slide. Okay. So in this demo, I'm doing um, again a request. You can see it's working. And what I'm doing now is I'm opening a test app that I created that has two requests. I was clicking on the request to button and you can see in Wireshark, there were several TCP packets being intercepted. So of course the sun, sun, ag, ag for the TCP handshake, and afterwards then um, push for um, sending also data um, to the server. And this traffic 
can of course not be intercepted in Burr, but we would like to intercept it so that we can see what is going on and also have all the capabilities of testing more easily and uh, replaying this kind of requests also. So let me show you how you can do this now. On the right side, you can see my um, iOS device. On the left side, my verb suite with no proxy installed. The DNS server is already running. And we can see that um, I'm just going again to example.com and we can see that the HTTP request is flying in. Next, I will be going to the DNS history tab in no proxy. And I'm clicking again on request two. So you can see now that when I click on the request to button, um, the no proxy plugin will show me all DNS requests that have been resolved. So this is a really powerful and nice feature because then we will get a very good, or we will get an overview about the domains that have been called by the app. So now we can copy and paste the domain. And what we will be doing is we go to server config. I will be using the domain that we just captured from our Wireshark earlier. We, we already know that the port is 31337. Then we will add this listener now and we will enable it. So now we have a listener on port 31337. And what we will be doing now is we go to TCP intercept. We click on intercept this on. I will be clicking again on the request to button in the app and you can see we got no credential. So it's just a TCP request that is going to non http bcdaemon.org to port 31337. And we got the user administrator and the password you got. And in the no proxy, we are able to intercept everything. We are able to see the history. We can do, um, we can use the TCP repeater. And we have a lot of nice features available that um, allow us to intercept, not even intercept. Um, but even do a lot more with all of these um, requests that are now flying in. So therefore, this is a really powerful feature. Okay, um, the summary for interception of non-HTTP traffic is use RVICTL to trace and monitor all the traffic from your iOS device. In order to do this for Android devices, you can simply rely on TCP dump. In both cases, definitely use Wireshark um, to do the proper network analysis and to also have a strong filter mechanism because Wireshark is, of course, a very mature and very good tool for the network analysis. And with the node extension for Burp, this is really um, a very nice way of um, intercepting not only HTTP traffic, but also non-HTTP traffic through DNS um, spoofing. And then you will be able to analyze the protocols and do a lot, uh, a lot of things. Okay, and this brings me already to the end um, of my talk. So the key takeaways for today is that intercepting the network communication um, has a lot of edge cases. I hope I could um, show this to you and I hope you could also learn something new today. Um, no, proxy is definitely a very easy to use tool that allows you um, to set up your own DNS server and um, you will be able to monitor the network traffic um, from iOS devices and from Android devices in a quite easy way with the steps that I just mentioned earlier. Of course, we cannot cover everything um, in such a short talk, so therefore there are, of course, topics missing. Um, one more thing that I would like to share with you is that um, Jeroen Beckers, who is working at Invisio, Invisio in Belgium, he was making um, really great blog posts where a lot of research and a lot of thought um, was put in in order to intercept the traffic um, from Android and also from iOS for Flutter apps when SSL pinning is implemented. So this is a bit more complex and you would need to reverse engineer a bit and you would also need to use Reader for this in order to intercept it because all your usual scripts or um, Frida scripts or also objection, if you're familiar with objection, will not be really working against Flutter apps because Flutter is using their own trust store. And therefore it's a bit um, different in the way of how you can disable SSL pin. But Jeroen Beckers has done a great job in documenting all of these in these two blog posts. One more thing I would like to share with you is um, proxying Android app traffic, which is the um, last link or the, the last link here on the bottom. 
there are also a lot of common issues and checklists that should also be able to help you or to further debug in case you have any um, problems when intercepting mobile apps. Okay, then we are at the end and I would say thank you very much. And in case, if you're not really that much into decision trees that you have seen earlier, uh, my wife and my daughter also created a nice presentation of it as, as a game. So you can definitely also download it and have fun with that and have fun with playing this. Okay, thank you very much. And I would say if there are any questions, then happy to also do some further Q&A. Maybe just one thing, um, the slide deck um, that I just presented to you is also available here on this link on the top right. Um, I'm just put the slide back on. You can also simply scan this QR code. Thank you. All right, thank you, Sven. Um, if you guys have any questions, please, uh, you can post that on the Discord channel. And uh, the channel will be open for, I think, quite a number, uh, period of time. Uh, also, Sven will be happy to answer your questions.